yesterday guys but I was tired so I didn't do it but happy belated Valentine's Day peeps yep and let's get into it let's do the flip drop that like it's high drop that right over here And there we go. All right, guys. Hey, let's get right into some Goldie Gossip obituaries. I only have one obituary this time, guys. Hey, we just lost Richard Roundtree. Richard Roundtree is the original Shaft. The second shaft was with uh um what's his name? Uh Samuel L. Jackson. But the original was Richard Roundtree. He died of cancer and we really lost an icon in black cinema. So rest in peace, um my man uh Man, I'm tripping. Anyways, let's get into some more Facebook shout outs. Yep, I got to do it. Guys, I always, I've been hitting up new people, but this time I want to hit up my old standbys. That's right, let's get the light going here. All right. Let's start out with Tina Bashus. That's my baby girl, Tina Bashus. Right on, baby girl. I, I like Tina Bashus. She's really cool. Uh, my baby, Nancy Anu and her niece, Heaven Sky, Dorothy Zorby. We have Catherine White. Shout out Cat in Detroit. Jennifer Ann in Detroit. Shout out Jennifer Ann. We got Paula Demetria. I love Paula Demetria. She is such a wonderful person and I adore her. Uh, Kathy Peterson, my old standby. Kathy Peterson, shout out to Cat. Diana Cogman, shout out Diana Cogman. Uh, Lauren Biggs, shout out Lauren Biggs. Uh, Audrey Frederick, she been following me a while. Shout out Audrey Frederick. Uh, let's go to Barbara Weiss Ward. Shout out Barbara Weiss Ward. She's been following me and she's been really been cool. We got Dan 
I mean, Diana and Danny Marquis, our neighbors next door, they're wonderful people. I got to give a shout out to Dan and Diana Marquis. Then we have Rebecca Rose. Oh, I still love the way she talks. I love the way she presents herself. Shout out to Rebecca Rose, a.k.a. Penelope Price. She does a lot of, uh, she does her own music. She, she has uh, public publications that she's put out. So please follow Penelope Price, a.k.a. Rebecca Rose. And then we got Amanda Rybars Simmons. Shout out to Amanda Rybar Simmons. Thank you, baby girl, for following me and keeping up with me. I really uh, adore what you do because you got your own grind and you doing your thing. And we got Marshall E. Allen out of Detroit, my buddy. What up, Marsh? Hit me up, dude. Uh, we got Kenneth Boyd out of Detroit, my very first tenor in my very first group. Uh, Taylor May. Shout out to Kenneth Boyd. Shout out to Lloyd Collier in Detroit. Shout out to my buddy, James Johnson. We call him SUNY. Shout out SUNY. We got O.B. King. We got Rodney and Quentin Troutman in Detroit. Longtime friends. We have uh, Christian Angelina and Aaron Day. My peeps in uh, San Bernardino. I love you, Ange. Hit me up on the DMs. Robert T. Payne III. That's my nigga there, boy. Robert T. Payne III. That's my boy. And we got Kim and Vernette Scott out of Detroit. That's my nephew and his wife, Kim. Shout out to Kim and Vernette Scott. We've got Julian Rayshon Bell, which is Vernette's son. That's my nephew. Shout out, my man. Uh, we got Donna Kelly and G. Ma Kelly out of Detroit. We got Terry Odom. That's my cousin in Detroit. She's in Hamtramck. Shout out to uh, Terry Odom. And you have my condolences for uh, my nephew, uh, your, your son. I know he passed away here recently, and you told me about it. I haven't had time to get back to you, but uh, shout out to my nephew. And we have uh, Anita Strickland Reams. Shout out Anita Strickland Reams. Thank you for uh, rocking with me, baby girl. I have my daughter. That's right, Goldie Himalaya's daughter. Her name is. Dr. Di uh, um, man, why am I tripping? Uh, her name is D uh, Dana Keys. Dr. Dana Keys out of Detroit. I love you, baby girl. I hope you continue to follow me. And also her mother, my baby mama, Linda Lau. Shout out to Linda Lau. And last but not least, we have Donna Keys Brooks, that's my daughter as well. She's in Detroit, that's Dana's sister, and I love you, Donna, and uh, shout me out and, and hit me up on the DMs. All right, that's it for our shout outs, and now we're gonna get into another true Los Angeles story. Now, I want to talk about, I used to be a lowrider. That's right. Believe it or not, Goldie Himalaya was a lowrider. My people were the Cordovas. Their car club was the altered ones. They were in uh, uh, Lowrider Magazine, and they repped for El Monte, California, as well as LA. But I don't want to tell you the story right away. First, 
I want to show you the clip that we did. I shot a video for my boy Frankie Cordova. And I want to show you the behind the scenes clip of that. And I'm going to come back and tell you the full story after the clip. Kick it. I apologize, there's no audio, and this video clip is old, but this is the real car club. Cordova, the Altered Ones is the name of the club. Those are some of the car cars. We were doing a video shoot, and this was just some of the preliminary tapes that I had taped. It'll keep going, there we go. All of the tough guys was down there, man. They brung down, you're going to see later, they brung down all of the low rider cars. That's Jody. She's the one that uh, busted up uh, me and Frankie boy. She was Frankie's girlfriend, and I had a white girl named Lita. And they didn't get along. And so I had to raise up out of there. But anyway, this was the day of the video shoot. Boy... The whole car club went crazy on this video shoot. This song was for Frankie Boy. I wrote a song called Cordova, The Altered Ones. And I decided to do... This is an analog video. As you can see, this is camcorder stuff. But I want you to see what real L.A. bangers look like. Nobody mess with these guys. I couldn't go to their meetings because I wasn't an, an official member. But every Sunday they would have a car club right here at the shop. This is Crazy Cuban Carlos's shop right there uh, in Frogtown, Adwater, like about uh, one mile east of Griffith Park. We shot it at the shop. Oh, Jody, she's something else, man. You can see the whole thing, okay. and you can read it. Okay. Well, rolling? Yeah. Rolling, Cordova, take three. Action! Look at me, y'all. I was young, boy. Look at the Chevys. Look at me, I had a head full of hair, look at that. Looking like Elvis. Thank you very much. I still had a little pot belly on me, but it's okay. Go up to the car and go and just go all the way around the car. You can go around the other ones too. But when you stop bouncing, make that the focus. There you go. Hey y'all, something around the car. We all got the car. Look at them Chevys, y'all. Okay, if you don't want to bounce this corner, uh, these are Playboy. Anything? Yeah, probably. Just move it. Get up. Get up. Get up. There goes Frankie Boy. There's Frankie Boy right there, boy. He passed away, man, but he was the leader of all of them. In fact, you can get up close on that shit if you want. Rest in peace, Frank Cardova. Yeah, your boy go to him a level was low riding there for a minute. That was their Impala right there. That's their logo. Altered Ones. Out of El Monte, California. 
It gets better than this, y'all. Check this out. Not yet. That'd be a good on a follow-up car while it's cruising. seat in the back for sale that's a Ford old school Ford I don't know what year Jody's skinny ass leg. Impala. Get 
your skinny ass leg out the way, woman. No, we don't want no side yeah. shot, Jody. Hold up, we gotta get a pep in there, too. Get your old ass yeah. off the camera. <laughs> Licking all the senoritas and senoras, all the Mexican babies. They really showed up for this video, man. They really showed up for this video. That was cool. Check out the little Vato uh, perpetrating. These are not close ups, Miha. I am so far away as a shame. Y'all look absolutely gorgeous. Be quiet. It don't matter, the sound ain't gonna go anyways. I'm just using the video. Yeah, you can talk, you can do anything. The cholos right there, boy. Look at the cholos. There go Frankie boy! Rest in peace, Frank! That is gorgeous, man. When I'm there and be born again, I hope it's his daddy woman. So I can go, I love that. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> Hello. So that was a clip, guys. But now, I got to take you back. I got to take you way back. Let me turn up the fire. So, I'm living in the San Fernando Valley. Stuff hadn't hit the fan between me and my wife. So we had a crib. It was called the Santiago Estates in Silmar, in the, Santi uh, in, in, uh, in the uh, San Fernando Valley. So, I'm still working at Children's Hospital, so I'm going back and forth from Hollywood Children's Hospital to the valley. And my best friend, his name is Crazy Cuban Carlos. He's a Cuban dude. He's a low rider. He's a mechanic. He works on motorcycles. They do the, the, the paint jobs, you know, the flakes, everything. Whatever you can afford, they could do it for you. And anyways, coming back and forth from Hollywood to the Valley, I had to pass Crazy Cuban Carlos's shop. His mother and his father were refugees from, um, what's his name? Um, Fidel Castro. Yeah, when Fidel Castro destroy Cuba, they had to exile to Los Angeles, and they got money. Uh, so Carlos lived on Sunset Boulevard and Rampart. I'm pretty sure they still own the house. I even painted their house, not once, but twice. I painted their house. But anyways, Carlos had a shop in Frogtown. Now, Frogtown is actually Atwater. And Atwater is a community like one block east of Griffith Park. You could virtually walk to Griffith Park. So, uh, I would always stop at the shop, drink beers, party, and hang out with Carlos. Now, up top of his shop, he was selling used cars, boats, whole bunch of junk. That wasn't really serious, but nevertheless, Carlos was selling that. Down below was where they did all the mechanic work, all of the paint jobs, that's where we hung out, that's where we got high, 
everything. So every day when I got off of work, I would stop off at Carlos' shop and we would hang out. Later on, he connected with Cordova, the Cordova family. Frankie Cordova, you're going to see it in the clip, was the father. He ran everything. He had three brothers, uh, Bubba, and I can't remember his other brother's name. He was really muscle-bound, and we would go to Griffith Park every Saturday and play bongos. People from all around would just get together, drums, percussions, bongos, whatever kind of drum you had, and we would get together in a drum circle, and we would play the jams all day long. Everybody would be grogging up. Smoking up, we'd have a good time till the police, you know, run us off. But anyways, I was cool with Frankie Boy. Now he had sons, Teddy, Cordova, uh, Stax, Cordova, and Mondo. Me and Mondo was really cool. Mondo Cordova. And these guys were the real deal, dude. I'm I'm talking about I never hung out with real low riders. These guys were the real deal. And when I started hanging around with them, they befriended me. And we became cool. And Frankie Boy took a really liking to me, which was my safety measure. Because the rest of them could be a ticking kind of time bomb, if you know what I mean. But Frankie kept everybody in check. So. Hanging out there, I decided to do a music video. And I, I'm, no, I'm, I'm sorry, not a music video, I did a song. It was called Cordova, The Altered Ones. You're gonna hear it at the end of the podcast. And I produced this song and I brung it to him. And when I played this song for Frankie Boy, Frankie Boy was crying, he said, Mikey, why you do this, man? I say, Frankie boy, man, I, I'm a songwriter. I thought about you, man, and I hooked it up, and here it is. And I had no idea how big it was going to become. I made cassette tapes. This is back before digital. Everything was analog. I made cassette tapes, and I passed it out to their entire car club and I didn't realize how much they revered this song so I said forget it I'm gonna do a music video you're gonna see on the clip the behind the scenes of us doing this video and uh, they bring in the low riders everything but anyways I'm living out in the valley still, and I'm coming back and forth between Church's Hospital, Crazy Cuban Carlos' shop, and the crib out on the, the, the north of the 210 freeway. Frankie Boy is the only person who gave me a party. It was my birthday was coming up, and I had no do it. I'm not into parties. I didn't really give a damn. Frank Cordova hooked up with all of his boys and they went behind my back and hooked up with my old lady. Back then I was married to Beth Neal. And they hooked up with Beth and behind my back, they hooked up a party for me. Now I lived in this Santiago estate, really nice estate. We had an Olympic sized swimming pool, two jacuzzis, and multiple jacuzzis for people to be able to barbecue and put their family there. And they rented the major gazebo, the one that was the biggest, and they put up balloons, they had my cake set up, they were barbecuing, I had no idea. It was a Saturday, and I went down to Carlos' shop, and Frankie boy said, Mikey, Come go with me, I want to take you somewhere. And I was kind of scared because 
You know how the Sopranos, when they ask somebody, come on, man, let's go somewhere, and they put you in the car, and you thinking you be, you're being taken for a ride? <laughs> That's how I felt. I say, they never asked me to go nowhere. And the, the, the other red flag was they had other cars behind us. There were low riders. It was like three or four cars. And I say, what's going on? But I got in the car. He drove out. He jumped on the 210 freeway out towards my crib to the valley. And they don't hang out in the valley. I say, where the hell is we going? He pulled up into my place. And I said, well, why would Frankie be taking me to my house? They didn't go to my crib. They went down to the pool area where everything was set up. My wife was there, my kids were there, Mikey and Jeremy and April. And it was a surprise birthday party. I say, man, you niggas got me. Y'all got me. And all of the Cordovas jumped in the pool. We barbecued and we had a wonderful time. But later on, me and the old lady started having problems. I had to move out. <clears throat> and I had a trailer that sleeps six. I took that trailer from the valley and put it on Carlos's lot, up top where he had all of those used cars and I was paying him to stay there in my trailer. And the Cordovas were there. And man, we would party. We would have a good time. But I hooked up with a young lady by the name of Lita. Let me get my breath. I hooked up with a young lady, it's a white girl. Crazy white girl, penitentiary girl from Kansas. Her name was Lita. But we hooked up since I was on the fence with my old lady. And she started staying with me in my trailer at Carlos's shop. Well, you're going to see in the clip, or you probably already seen in the clip, Jody. Jody was the white girl who was posing. That was Frankie Boy's woman, okay? And my girl leader and that girl that you saw in the clip, they didn't get along. Two white girls at each other's throat. She accused Lita of trying to hit on Frankie Boy while I was going to work. And it wasn't going to work. At that point, I got a little scared, and I sat down with Frankie. We had a sit down, just like the Sopranos. And I said, Frankie, just let us go on and get up out of here without no beef, man. And I would appreciate that. He said, I love you, Mikey. I said, I love you too, Frankie boy. He said, okay, man, you guys can go. And me and Lita took off, and I ended up getting an apartment right across the street from Mike and Tanya in Koreatown on Westmoreland. But anyways, uh, later on, the Cordovas came to my job. I was still working at Children's Hospital in the surgical department. They came to me and they said, Frankie boy just passed away from a heart attack. Man, I was broke up. And they gave me an offer that I could not refuse. They said, Mikey, you got to show up to the funeral. The funeral was at Forest Lawn, right off of the 10 freeway. And I showed up to the funeral. The video that I made for him and the song that I made for him blew up with, with the car club, El Monte, everything that they was involved with. All of them knew who I was 
And I didn't realize the magnitude of that song. So when Frankie Boy passed, I showed up at Forest Lawn, and it was like some soprano stuff. I saw lowriders lined up for as far as I could see. I mean, the big handlebar mustaches, they was all lined up with their arms folded. I see, look at this. As soon as I pulled up, Frankie's brother, both of his brothers, they came to the car, all of his sons, Stax, Teddy, Mondo, all of them came to the car and they escorted me in. Dude, I'm walking and everybody in the whole funeral lined up outside with their lowrider cars was looking at me. And I didn't realize that they know who I was. They said, that's Mikey. That's Mikey, that's little Mike. He the one who did the song and the video for Frankie. So we went in, we sat down, and they escorted me over to Frank Cordova's mother. Listen to me. To me, it felt like I was sitting next to Griselda uh, Garcia. I sat next to her and she said, Mikey, I heard this song and it's a wonderful song and I saw the video. Thank you so much for representing Frankie. And I told her, yes, man, I was, dude, I ain't gonna lie to you, I was scared. I seen so many gang members standing around me and I'm sitting next to the godmother Frankie's mother. And so, after the funeral, I went back to the crib. And at this point, Frankie was gone and he was the only one who could, who could control the situation. When Frankie died, everybody was a loose cannon. And Teddy, his son Teddy, was the worst. When Teddy would drink, he was going to whoop somebody's ass or shoot somebody. And at that point, I realized I had no more safety. I couldn't hang around the Cordovas no more. And his nephew came to my house. Now, they were gangbangers, too. And they didn't have that much respect for me because they were younger. And he came to my crib, and he gave me an offer I couldn't refuse. He said, I want Frank's tape. I want that videotape. And I told him, dude, I didn't want no beef with the, with the Mexicans. And without Frankie being there to protect me, I was vulnerable. So I gave him the tape. But I had extra behind the scenes tape, which you saw on the video which I was able to, you know, retain it. Nigga, I still got my lunch money from the third grade, okay? I hold on to everything. But anyways, after that, I had to separate myself from the Cordovas, and I realized that uh, they were good people, but I couldn't hang no more, and that's my life, low riding. That's right, I hung out for a minute with real low riders. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And after that, I'm gonna close it out with the song that I made for Frank Cordova. It's called Cordova, The Altered Ones. Good night, peeps. Go to Himalaya, y'all.
زال چل تنشه آج تازی که تو هست ده نمبر وانگه یو نام ده فرین پیده آدگه یه دست نوار آشه به پین سرین کستان ده کن This is the only custom Love for me Is the best in time All the doors they jump so high. They never know what they know. They're playing it all together, and there's no lie. Shedding paint is just custom. 